Good morning. Happy New Year. Welcome to the Shack Shack. It's Thursday. I think it could be like the, the 6th of January or something like that. And, uh, and here we are back in the saddle and looking forward to spending an hour with you doodling, being safe, happy and creative. Come on in. I hope you're there. I hope you can hear me. Paul, please let me know if the volume is okay. I put the wrong jumper on today. I thought, I haven't worn this for ages and it's really cold out and I haven't worn this one for years. And now I know why. Because of course, she can't put the microphone on a, <laughs> on a um, polonic. So, so there you go. Now I know. So it may not work. I have to keep pulling it down to get it off my neck. <laughs> All right, it's a good start, good start. Come on in. And I might knock it every time, so I'm going to have to start crafting like this today, which is very good for the jowls. Jowls. Whoever thought we'd get jowls, eh? <laughs> oh, no. Don't think about it. Come on. Bit of cream for the hands. Let's get started. Oh, here they come. Good to have you company. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah, did you have a good Christmas? I just whacked my head on the Christmas decorations. Have you got your Christmas decorations down yet? Have you? I'm doing that tonight. Won't take long. <laughs> you have to put a lot up to get a lot down. Have you done your decks yet? Today's the day, isn't it? Otherwise, it's bad luck or something. Nice jumper, Dad. Well, we'll soon see. <laughs> right. What's the weather like where you are? Is it cold? Is it? It's freezing here. Morning, cold in our neck of the woods. Where are you then? Oh, it's going up too fast. Chrissy, where are you? Yeah. No, Pat Hosking. Good morning, Pat. Where are you? What about you? Are you Cornwall? I must be mad. Anyway, I know it's parky up north, up north. Yours came down yesterday. What are we talking about, Catherine? Your decorations. <laughs> oh, gutter. I know. At this time in the morning as well, you wouldn't expect it, would you? Very cold in Redditch, Catherine. Yeah, nice and fresh, though. I was hoping that perhaps Dave would come home before it got dark and we could go for a brisk walk. Don't forget the reindeer dangling behind you. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Yeah, I mustn't forget the reindeer. I'm rubbish at this. There he is, dangling behind me. I won't. I like him. Right, come on then. Let's get started. I tell you what, I'm so sorry that I, I we didn't have the shack uh, between Christmas and New Year. I had to blow it out. Sorry about that. My apologies. Something came up and um, so I couldn't do it. Never mind. Tis what it is. We're all right now, though. Everything's fine. And um, yeah, so we've got off to a good start. Paul's been on the telly already, and that went really nicely. I love those dyes that Paul did on the craft store. I think it was Monday you did that, didn't you, Paul? Absolutely wonderful. Um, yeah, uh, and he's also on the telly today again at 11 o'clock. We're filling a few gaps here, and we mean to start as we are going to continue. So Paul's doing a couple of shows this today at 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock with some other very, very, very lovely that are fresh cut dyes. So that's worth tuning into the craft store for. Paul's very, very good at that kind of paper engineering. That's his background, really. That and stamping's very good. Well, he's just an all-round good egg, really, isn't he? Right, come on. You rock. This getting faded going in the dishwasher too often yummy polgate polgate that's down the road from us good morning amelie oh no goes up so fast the messages these glasses don't do it anyway good morning one and all happy new year it's great to have your company let's get started in case you're new to the fold the shack shack started nearly two years ago now Nearly two years ago, my friends. So this is actually, wait for it, our 238. Let me just put that in my little diary. 238, 6th of January. 
My God, that's unbelievable. Right, 2022. Who'd have thought it, hey, that we're still doing this? It's good, though. It's good. It's all good. Um, and so if you're new to the fold, that's what we do. We get together because, of course, when, when, when COVID, uh, when we had a complete lockdown, we just, we just circled the wagons, really, didn't we? And we, we kept each other company, kept each other sane, just did a bit of doodling. And I, I spent a couple of hours this morning re-putting together all the things to get them in the right order. Um, and we've got, do you know how many folders we've filled now? I just, I won't go through all of them because that will take the full hour. But I'll show you where we started. Look, this is, this is quite impressive. Look at this. So this was our very first doodle on Monday the 30th of March 2020. Do you remember the little birds? And that was, that was it, wasn't it? That was all we did. Just get a pen, get a piece of paper. That's all you need. Nothing's changed there. All you need is a pen and a piece of paper to join in. And that's really where it all began, wasn't it? Then we made a little tree. Then we started getting a bit more adventurous. And then we got more and more adventurous. And then we started, look, happy. Yeah, do you know what? I found a postcard of happy. When I was looking earlier, where's those post? Where are those postcards? I had a great pile of them because we started making postcards with our doodles on them. I don't even know where they are now. Here it is, a bright blue one. I'm sure that's it because we've got all these lovely postcards, haven't we? Where's the happy one? There it is. Look, happy postcard. Boom. Look familiar? I know. In fact, I shall put that in there. 3rd of April, 2020. And so it goes on and on and on. Cord, do you remember these? Remember that? There's another postcard of that one. Beautiful. Check it out. Oh, I know. Isn't that nice? I'll stick that in there as well. Yeah, so we've been keeping you company. Every now and again, we threw in a doodle, a proper Zentangle doodle, which we're going to do today as well, I think. That will that'd be nice to get us in the groove. This is nice. We did that. Do you remember? So in the beginning, I mean, we were getting together every single day, weren't we? So it was quite... It was, you know, we were there at 10 o'clock every single morning. And, um, and so we've got folder on folder, right? And then last year, we, we slowed it down a little bit. So, so now, because we only got together once a week then, so I thought we'd have a look at last year in review. Should we do that? You see, the thing is that all of these... All of these sessions, all these doodle, se doodle sessions, they're all recorded. They're all on YouTube. They're there for you. Is my chair going down a bit? <laughs> I'm doing, a, doing a Mr. Bean. You know when he goes at the board meeting? <laughs> okay. Make a mental note. Great, don't wear this jumper again. Right. So this was last year what we did. Let's have a look. Nice. And um, so we started, well, Happy New Year, that was obvious. So we started with Happy New Year, which again, we turned into a really fabulous stamp set, didn't we, this year? Um, and into a nice postcard, which is coming out in all the boxes throughout January. So last year, then what we did, and forgive me if I'm not in perfect order, chronological, I think I am, but I might have got it wrong. I've just been sliding postcards in. Do you remember the teacups? I really enjoyed doing the teacups. That was a really fabulous doodle. Look, that was when we, that was, that's the original one. Isn't that nice? And then we made a nice postcard out of the original. Isn't that a smash? Right, then we did some postcard coloring. That was nice. I like that woodpeckery thing. Oh, and then we went to Egypt and we learned all about hieroglyphics. See, all of these, you can find if you want to know about hieroglyphics then we did some really beautiful watercolor butterflies oh and then we did that that was quite nice with the writing happy birthday d and we did the watercolor flowers at the top i know a lot of you enjoyed that i saw that coming up again and again on facebook in fact we talked about that yesterday i was talking about that yesterday on um on my blog i said about how um, 
how, how the sharing, how we share our ideas and inspiration on Clarity Worldwide and on Groovy Worldwide. And it just is lovely how um, this sharing of ideas, it just inspires people. It gives, it nudges people. It gives people, you know, you'll, you, you may not think that your work is worthy, but when you post it on, say, Groovy Worldwide, or then somebody else sees it and they go, oh, I love that. I want to do that, you know, and that's how it works. It's like um, it's just passing the message on. Perhaps you you see it from me or you see it here and then you think, yeah, then you put your little spin on it and then you post that somewhere and then somebody else sees it and they see it and they see it and that's how it's that ripple effect, that arty ripple effect. It's all good. Right, and then we went to Italia, didn't we? And then we went to the Mardi Gras and we did some really, because we went from butterflies. My thinking was butterflies. And then we went to, you know, serious butterflies. Um, where else did we go? Oh, then we did a little colouring in exercise with our postcards again, uh, our feathered friends. See, the thing is with these, they take a little while, don't they? So, but I remember doing, I remember doing this resist on the blue with the white pencil. Do you remember? That was great. Um, Oh, this was nice. This was when we, that's when we started doing these hops. That's a print from an, a lino cut that I did. I did that for my dad. Isn't that nice? I've got to finish that. I tried to make a lino cut out of our drawing. Look, see? Yeah. I've done, well, I didn't try. I've done it. <laughs> what am I talking about? There you go. Look, the, the hills. This is the downs, wasn't it? The Kentish. There we go. Look. So you go all the way through. A little ladder. Do you remember doing this? And we went to the hop farm and then we went all the way down to the beach, to the coast. I like that one. Yeah, that, Barbara, needs to be made into a lino cut, missus. We've obviously done one because it's on your dad's mantelpiece, that one. Right, and then this was cool. Do you remember when we started doing the scrolls and the swirling? That was a really good exercise. See, all this stuff is still... You want to know how to do this stuff? It's still... Paul will give you the, the link, I'm sure. Oh, and then we did. This was the pièce de résistance, wasn't it? <laughs> Camelot. Do you remember Camelot? Cool, that was a job, wasn't it? I mean, that was, I mean, I think quite a few people jumped ship when we got to Camelot. I think it was a, quite a challenge, that one, wasn't it? But it's, you know, and again I say, and again I say, thrice I say, um, there are no experts in this building. You know, there are no experts. Nobody's judging you. It's not a competition. It's just primarily, first and for almost, always has been and always will be a place to come and hang out with a bunch of like-minded people, learn a little bit, pick a bit up, have a bit of banter, have a cup of tea, make friends, be safe and get creative. You know, there's no, there are no fees attached. There's no subscription attached. It's free. So, so when we did this, many of you embraced it and did it beautifully. And I know others just went, whoosh, ran for the hills. <laughs> but that's okay, because we, then what we did was we had to start getting, simplifying it a little bit, because then we didn't have as much time. Do you remember? And we did a book cover. I love that book cover. Did you finish it? I'm sure I did put some green to it, but I, ah, there's a little bit of colour. Yeah, I really, really like. If I'm, I'm going to write a book about the Lone Tree. I've already started in my head. I just need to put it on paper now. <laughs> the Lone Tree. Then we did the Christmas decorations. You remember the bauble shape? Yeah, that was a good one. And then we did different, same shape, different in fill. That was quite good. Ah, now that's an interesting one. I'm going to pull that one because that was one where we used. A bauble, didn't we? That was quite clever, that one. Right, that's a proper optical illusion. Let's call it an optical illusion. I'll pop that one out and I'll leave that one in so I know. Right, that's that. And then, I think, then we went to, yeah, simple now, wasn't it, really? I think it's good to have a look at the year in review because you don't realise how much you've done you know, we've been so prolific in the two years. When you think about the amount of art that you and I 
have um, created together. It's quite formidable, you know. Even though, even though we're only getting together once a year now, once a year, once a week, in a year, those, those hours add up, don't they? They sure do, Barbara. Right, so here, do you remember, Fortis in Arduous, we started doing these wreaths. I really like this. And I tell you what, I have, right, heads up, heads up, um, on Sunday, two to four, we're ahead of this this time. We've got this. Do you remember when we were doing the wreaths and we put we put we we framed um, the 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 little poppet? Do you remember? We've got some of that in here. Oh, I've got to show you because yesterday I spent the whole day. Right, stay there. In fact, hang on a minute. Look, see these these frames. This is another set. These ones here, I came up with a really cool idea. Right, stay there. I've got to show you. I've got to just show you. I can walk away, you see. I'm not tethered. But if I were to show you, like, I've just got to show you these two samples, right, that I did yesterday. Let me just show you this. If I show you that and that, because this is what I'm going to be doing on the telly. Here we go. Let me take you this one. I'll see this one. Right. On the television on Sunday, two to four, we're showcasing, launching a brand new collection. And it was inspired by us here in the shack. Okay, so I dug it because I'm prepping up that end of the room. Um, right, let me show you. And you'll see, you'll see when you, uh, I need a bit of paper or card underneath just so that you can see what I'm showing you. Right, so for example, so this is the set. Okay, let me take this out of the pack. Right, this is just one four. There are four seasons. We're, we're tackling this from a seasonal point of view. So let me just show you. So you've got these two. They're symmetrical, actually. These, this is the only one that's symmetrical. All the others are, are asymmetric. But you know that the idea is, is it's all about this. See, it's all about this. So you've got these two, and then you've got loads and loads of little tiny assets. If I... Bring it up to here. Let me see if you can see it. Let it just focus. Right, you see, you've got the deer, you've got the owls, you've got loads of leaves and acorns. So this one here is actually leaves are falling, autumn is calling. So this is actually the autumn set. But I want, let me just show you something. So here's one that I did yesterday to show you how these, these two work like that, right? And then I've done a little landscape inside, just on designer paper. Yeah, recapturing your mojo as we're blogging, right? This is very easy. Design a paper. It's, it's just, it's instant. But I want to show you something very interesting. This one here, this tree. So I took my inspiration from a piece of artwork that Debbie McMullen, one of the design team friends, gave me, right? Now, this is the fabulous part that I love about this, right? These stretch. That is that. So in other words, let me just show you. If I take this, this, right, I can, when I put it on a handle, let me just grab a handle. This is not rehearsed, I'm afraid. Right, let me take a, let me take a clean handle, right? I can, I can stretch it, look. So I can stretch it and mount it so that it's straight. So that way, if I want to make a straight tree, or, see, I can bend it over if I want to. I can take it up there like that. I can go straight, and then when it gets to there, I can bend it like that. Look, see? I can, that's, that's it. And then the other one, it goes in the other direction. How about that for clever? So can you, and can you see how that becomes that? Just by turning them around and pointing them in the other direction, suddenly you have a tree. And this one here, where the owl's sitting on, is the same one as that one there. And are these smaller? Oh, yes, they are. We made them smaller because they need to fit in there. I know. So I just I thought, do you know what? I'm going to show you those because, and here's the link, these, these stamps are inspired by what you and I did in the shack. And I think that is a really, that's a cool connection, you know. 
that's a cool connection. It's a lot easier to have a stamp. Of course, you could draw it if you feel inclined, but isn't that, isn't that pretty? Hey, I know. First week, first week back in the shack, and we're launching our craft store new year with some formidable stamps that we inspired in the shack. You got to start as you mean to continue. That's what I think. So there you go. Ain't that cool? Right, I mustn't lose those because those are my demos. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie, for the tree inspiration. That really impressed me when I saw those. I thought, oh, perfect. So this is another set altogether, but they're going to come in later in the year. Do you remember when we were doing the poppets and we started doing the framing? This is nice. Look, so many lovely frames. So towards the end of last year, we, we were just doing clever, simple framers, weren't we? And then we've got all the pop-it pop postcards. So, yeah, it's been quite a year, you know. We've been really, really creative. There's so much there. You know, we haven't even haven't scratched the surface yet, though, have we? I hope you're enjoying it anyway. I hope you're enjoying it. Good job. I got some clarity gift vouchers for old oh, Ken Kilminster. <laughs> Happy New Year, Ken. Right. It's Karen Gilgan's 60th birthday today. Happy birthday, Karen. Great to have your company. 60 years young. You don't look 60, Karen. Good Lord. She doesn't look 60. Believe you me. I want what you're on. <laughs> right, are we going to do some doodling? Oh, I'll tell you what I was going to do before we start. I'll tell you what you need. Nothing's changed. You need micron pens. Okay. If you want to join in the shack, it's not a big investment. In fact, everything that we do, you could do with a pen, a biro, and a piece of copy paper. Okay. But if you want to have the stuff that we use, I'll put a bit of copy paper underneath so you can see it. This is what I'm going to use today. So you can go and gather your bits if you need to. Right, I'm using the Micron pens. So yeah, you can use a biro. The thing about these is, and you're gonna see the advantage of these in a minute, they've got sizes. There are thin ones and thick ones. And today we're using the really thin ones. Oh, wait, the really thick one as well. Then the other thing that I'm going to use a lot in the coming weeks and months is that set of 12 polychromos. There are, there's a set of 12 polychromos. Paul will give you the link. It, um, it's got like greys, lots of greys. I mean, you could buy the big, you know, if you've got gift vouchers and you want to treat yourself, then treat yourself to the tin of 60. But the, the set of 12, it works really well too. And it's and it kind of supplements if you've got the the, the pergoliners, the watercolour, because we use these a lot, don't we? So that's something to consider. And then the only other thing I'm going to use today, but like I say, you can use a piece of paper or a square of card, anything. I'm going to go with the stamp board shapes. So I'm going to be using the stamp board shapes. Uh, and I'm using the square one, the small square one. So if you're thinking about joining in, that's all. But, you know, all you, need, you don't need, I'm not saying you need this. I'm not saying you can't do what we're going to do if you haven't got the stamp board or the black. That is, no, 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 no. If you've got a pen and you've got a piece of paper, you can do it. Okay? That's the key. Don't, don't be backing off because you haven't got that. Right? And you can do this in any language. <laughs> I'm just looking. I wonder what size this is. If I got, uh, I've got a centimeter ruler. That will help me. I want to tell you the size of the square that we're using. It probably would tell me on the in centimeters. Yeah, Andy. Um, Six point five. So that'd be about. What do you think? Just under three inches? Yeah, 6.5 centimetres. So it'd be about three inches, I reckon. Don't 
two two and a half inches. What do you think? Two and a half inches, I reckon that is. My eyeball tells me about two and a half inches. My rulers are over on the other side in another bag. So what we need is that, right? And I'm going to actually, we're going to do that. There you go. That's where we're headed. Don't take long. Won't take long. Just get yourselves a, get yourselves a, I'm going to go and get my inch ruler now. Thing is, you see, my age, I'm a bit of an inch girl. You tell me something six inches long, I know exactly what six inches is. You tell me it's 15 centimetres, I am in the dark. So I reckon this has got to be about two and a half inches. And what is it? Boom, in the back of the net, two and a half inches without looking. Just checking, just checking. So two and a half inches, you know exactly how long it is. And then you go to the, the centimetre ruler and it tells you it's six and a quarter centimetre. It tells you nothing. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're from our German friends or our French friends, they will know exactly what a centimetre is. We just don't, we don't do that, do we? And I don't know, I should, I ought to. It's just an age thing, isn't it? Right, so this is what we're going to do. And it's not hard. It's nice. And it's one of those doodles. I thought what would be really nice, right? is if we let me come in a bit closer actually no i won't yet for the next couple of weeks just sort of ease ourselves into the new year you know last year we said we're gonna travel gently and i think that's what we should be doing this year too just travel gently right and don't worry about what's going on out there for the next two or three weeks, what we're going to do is make really lovely two and a half inch square tiles. And then if we if we want to mount them proper, like lovely, if you take if you use a stamp board, it's deluxe. Right. And then you can mount it on the next size. Yeah. Looks really nice. And the thing about the stamp board, you see, it's not white. It's a sort of a ivory color. Looks very classy. Actually, Dave made a frame. Did you think that fits in there? Oh, you're going to think that I've done this deliberately. I haven't. I haven't. Do you know, as, as God is my witness, right, this is just sitting on the side. Dave made it for me. But it sits on that. Look at the look, 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 look. So you can take that, right, and then you can mount that in there like that. Core art. Hey? Excellent, excellent, excellent art. There you go. And Dave even made a little frame for me out of, um, he's making frames out of old palette boards. Isn't that cool? Right, so that's what we're going to do. While you're gathering up your pieces, I wanted to show you, not because I'm showing off, but because I want to show you when, what I do when I'm not working, right? Because, you know, I've been doing pottery. So I thought I'd show you a couple of pieces that I've done. Simple. Because what's interesting is when you see the pottery that I do, you also see the connection between what we do in our paper world, in clarity world, and then what we do in, um, in, in pottery, what I do in pottery. You know, those 30-odd years of paper craft, have certainly, they are reflected in, in the ceramics that I do. So for example, let me show you these three little pieces. They're very simple, but nice. I like, I like, right? So this is, for example, this is just a simple, simple stoneware. And you can see it's just got a flash through there. And at a glance, you will know exactly that this has been done, this is a resist technique. It's been done with wax. So just take a brush, with a very dry wax and you sweep it through and then when the glaze goes on it, wherever you put wax the glaze resists it you see and this little fella he's actually what I call a balance bowl look it's got three legs and so he always sits really nicely see he's a balance bowl so so it's just a little set I'm working on 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 my thinness but you often hear in the throwdown, you hear them talking about waxing your bottoms. Well, what I use, I use wax to resist the glaze as well. So that's quite nice. 
One of the in the in the throwdown at the moment, there's a young lad called Keshlan, um, C E L L A N, Welsh name, uh, curly hair, and he's from our studio here. He's from our pottery studio. Yeah, he's so he's such a nice fella. He's only 23, massive talent. I hope that he actually um, starts to to show you what he can do because it is pretty spectacular. Yeah, so so there's a little something. Right, I'll put them back up there. Here's one that I think. This is very clarity as well. Let me see if I can show you this. So this is um, hand build. It's a hand build one. These are these are the other ones are two hand, two thrown and one hand build. But you can see here. Look, the doodles. Welcome to the shack shack. So this is all done with um, underglazes and then white over the top. It's quite nice, isn't it? I like that one. So that's that's what it looks like. Yeah, quite, quite different, isn't it? But what's interesting is when you put um, when you put a white glaze over the top, all the underglazes show through, but really subtly. So I like that. That's my kind of that's my sort of style. And then right, pièce de résistance. This was the big job this year, right? So I made this bowl, and. And what's interesting is it's really clarity. It's a clarity bowl, right? When you when you look, you're going to go, oh, it's Jack Doodle. It is. Look, have a look inside. See? Look. <laughs> it's exactly what we do, isn't it? Do you see? It's exactly what we do. There you go. I just took a, I took a, a needle tool and I just stood, scratched around, just like we do when we're making our frames. Hmm? And then I did the same on the on the back as well. And this is all just cobalt oxide. And then again, see, I like that. I like it when it, um, with the white, see, I like. So this got white, believe it or not, that's got white uh, glaze over the top again, white matte. You wouldn't think it, would you? But it does. And then, and then I, I put um, a black oxide in there. Yeah, cool, cool. So there you go. I wanted to show you my kind of year, just a little taster of what I've been up to on my days off. Um, I haven't got much done, but then, like I say, I'm no expert. I enjoy what I do. It's it's does the job, you know, it does the job. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the pots aren't perfect. I, 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 I'm striving to get them perfect, but I'm not, I'm not, I, it's the journey. It's not the destination. It really is. It's the process that does it for me. And so, so now I'm hoping you've got all your bits and now we're going to get started. Okay. So we'll leave that one there so you can see it. And then I'll take a piece of copy paper and put that one under there so you can see that at the same time. Now let me think, I'm left-handed, so it'd probably be better like that. There you go. Right. So we'll put that one there, put that one there. Are you ready to go? I think Paul is going to have to leave us. Thank you, Paul, for your help. Jilly's taking over in the room with you now. So if you have any questions, Jilly's going to help you. Paul has to get ready for his TV show. He's Skyping. So he needs to, he needs to, he needs to go. Right, now I'm going to take the number eight, the large one, and we're just going to go straight to this little disc or a two and a half inch square. So at the end of the day, you could draw around it and then just do the work on a piece of copy paper, right? All you need is a, is a square. My, I, I saw this on, uh, on Pinterest, something like this, not the same, but different. And I thought, I really liked it. And so um, it was a, a Russian, a Russian Zentangle, person or a doodler and I really liked the way she, she or he did it I think it was she hands and then I thought so I tried to emulate it um, but I did it too tight and too big and it took forever and didn't go very well so the idea is to stay small take and and do quite bold areas right so when I did it if I show you what I did first you will understand the difference so I'll show you where I went wrong I made it too tight. It was gonna. It still would work, but it just take twice as long. So the the lines were a little bit too tight, and it was going to take a lot longer. I'll get there, 
but for the sake of this, see the areas are quite big. Just, just saying. Right, number eight. And what we're going to do is, I'll show you up here, so you, you get it, right? You're going to, you're going to pretend it's hair, right? So you're going to start in one corner and you're, but you can pretend it's hair. That's all I can say. That's how I did it. I started up here and I went like that and then I just pretended that it was hair, okay? But you're going to kind of go in the same direction, right? This is very tight. See what I'm doing? It's, so it's very tight like this. And the way to avoid, let's get it right in the beginning because that, that will give you the, when you do this, as you come down, if you do one, put the next one quite close to it like that, but not too close. See, that's too close. That's better, right? Oh, I'm going to turn it over and start again. Right, so I'm going to start up here and I'm going to go one and then I'll go in the same direction. This is with the fat one, but now I'm going to make a bit more of a gap. See, now I'm going to, what I'll do now is I'll come in and it'll be like I've gone behind that one. So now I'm going like that. See? So don't, you don't have to overthink it, but you make a few lines and you get close, then you go away again. So you come in again, you come in, you make a gap like that, you go in underneath, go again. So this time I'm going to come up like that, I'm coming over, I'm going underneath and round. And don't think, oh, well, this looks like rubbish. It does look like rubbish, but it's not even, you haven't even started yet. Just go like that. And if you feel like it, go back the other way. Do this instead. Just put lines in, but don't overlap them. See, when you get to that place, you see what I mean? So you're going to go like that, and then we'll make a big hole. Right, here we go. Because you're going to add lines as well as you go. This is going to be all right. Don't worry if we don't get to there and there at the same time. I'm not going to worry about any of it. Right, here we go. And then we come again, another hairline. That's quite a good one. Do another one. Now this time I'm coming up and under like that. That'll be a good one. Now this time I'll come this way. Okay. Now I'm going to make a big one like that. And as I'm in the middle, you see, it's, it's larger than at the ends. And really don't overthink it. We were talking about this in the, um, in the shack this week about not overthinking because a lot of us have kind of lost our mojo a bit. I, I certainly had a bit. I had with my pot, pottery, I'd really lost my mojo. Um, yeah, kind of rudderless really. Um, but I find just watching YouTube, watching the experts, there's a guy called Florian Gadsby that I love watching. He's so gentle and so talented. I love watching him. He's just so modest with his work and, and his work is just supreme. There you go, you see? So you just come like that and then you make a gap like a cat's eye. That would be a nice one to do. That's it. And now this one, I might do it. See, it's funny how I'm kind of coming round now. It's almost like I've compensated. Don't overthink it, friends. Just, just do this. You're going to add some more lines as you go. That's it. And then as it gets closer to the corner again, we'll probably... Have you got a Sharpie pen handy? That'll do. Not bad. Looks a bit ropey, but then it's, <laughs> it's not finished yet, is it? <laughs> it's not finished yet. Right. So let me give you a chance to catch up with me. Okay. Now, where's Jilly? Jilly, are you with me? Let me just find Jilly. There we are. So Jilly is in the room with you now, and I'm just touching base with her. 
Okay. Right, so now we've got that, right, which looks a bit ropey, but it's supposed to, it's not finished yet. Okay. And now what we're going to do is start putting in, the first thing we're going to do is put in the, the pearls or the peas in a pod, right? Now to do that, I'm going to go with a number one or 0 0.5, right? And the reason I do that, because what, what happens is if you, say you've got that area there like that, and then you put your, your peas in like that, if you use a thick pen, then by the time you color it in, your peas will be much, much smaller because we're going to black out this area here, right? So it's best to use a fine pen or at least an 0.1. So let's just let's just start. So, for example, I'm looking. I want a bit of balance. I think um, I'm going to make a, another line there like that. Yeah, I'm going to make another line there, and then I'm going to put one, two, three in there. Maybe four. That'll do. Then I'm going to put another one here. One, two. So I'm putting my peas in now. And I'm striking, I'm kind of striking a balance because we're going to put some lines in. And let me put this up close so you can see what I'm doing. See? So you're putting P's in, and then you're putting the lines in as well, the tracks. And then afterwards you put the shadow in, and that's when it starts to look like it's folded over the top. But believe you me, it started out life like that. Okay? Let's give it a go. We just need to decide. If you feel, see, you've got so much control over this. If you feel, for example, that you want to put lines in here, um, P's in this one or in that one, mm, but you feel that this is too big an area, you see, like too large an area, you can always add more lines. If I want to, I can always add another line there, you see. Nothing's stopping me doing that at all. Okay, but I'm going to put peas in here now. And even though I'm saying don't overthink it, I'm saying concentrate on the, the roundness, right? So this one here, I think what I'm going to do here is bring this down and pull it out there so it stops there. And I think... I might do, I think I'm going to go, right, peas here, or pearls, let's call them pearls. Here we go. And as soon as we do this, we get into a really nice kind of zen moment, don't we? So this is pretty cool, this one. Let's have a look, am I coming the right way? It seems to me, doesn't matter. Let's get the pearls in. Right, so this one here. Hmm. See, that's hanging over the edge there. That's really nice. Can always add more later, can't we? Let's do another pearl there. Here we go. There is no real... That'll do. That's nice. I think I'll have another another set of pearls here. Uh, what do I think? Oh, I want to cut that off there. Do I want to bring that over a bit? Oh look. No, I think I'll leave that as it is. Actually, this is really nice. This one, isn't it? Too much, but let's put a pearl in there. It's just the perfect shape for these. There we go. Just take your time. This is a really, really good exercise. Have a look. So do I want to go? No, I don't. So I want to just stop that one like that. Right. This is a really good exercise in um, Keep going. Don't think that it's 
that this is the end result. It's a really good, it's a good exercise in, in just keep going. It's not finished yet. You know, you're not going to see the result until the very end. And I think that so often we, we go, oh, it's rubbish. See, I'm going to stop that one there like that. And I'm going to stop this one there like that. I'm going to put another little line in there. Because we're focusing so much on... So that one looks a bit ropey. We're focusing so much on um, the minutiae, on the detail. We're, we're high, super critical of it. We think it's absolute rubbish because that's what we're looking at. So what we're going to do here is, is just keep going. Don't overthink it. Just stop worrying about the outcome because you're not there yet. Don't, you're already saying it's never going to work. But you don't know that. We, you, we can decide that at the end whether it worked or not, can't we? We don't have to, we don't have to decide that quite yet, hey? So this is quite a good one here, a little one. Let's have a see when you turn it round. See there, that would be a good place for more pearls, I think. But I'm going to make it ra a slightly smaller because it's a little bit too big. Could almost put another one in, like that. Now it probably will look better. That's it. So balance-wise, could do with something over here, couldn't we? This one looks a little bit sad. But do we want to put another... Hold up. Yeah, we do. I'm going to pop another one of those in like that, just to... Cool. So the thing is, it's just a question of rivers or flow or waves and then filling them. And it doesn't matter how you build up the waves or the ribbons or the hair, right? You literally are coming down. I'll do, I'm, when we finish here in a minute, I'm going to have another go. I'm going to try again and see. I want a couple of these. Try different ones. But I think I, I do need a couple more down here. Let's put one in here. Here we go. Two. Just for balance. Is it looking all right? What do we think? I feel like I need another one there as well. Of the pearls. I reckon that's about it for the pearls. We can always, if we if we need more, we can always add more, can't we? Mm -hmm. So now we've done that. Now the next thing is to take the the smallest one. What have we got? The O. I think the O five is probably the best one for this. Yeah, and then fill. I reckon. Yeah, the O five or the one will do it. And what we're going to do now is this. This will start to give it a little bit more form. Just got to have some good eyes on this and take your time. Don't race this one. And what we're doing now is we're filling in the area around the pearls. Now we've drawn them. Let's. We've done similar things over the last couple of years. There. Yeah, see, the pearls have got a good size to them because we've used a fine pen. It's the same if you make stars in the sky and then you black out the sky afterwards. You need to make the stars larger than you anticipate having them because when you, when you add the blackness around the outside, they shrink. Same as my pearls are shrinking a little bit. Not badly, though. You've got to look at the whole thing. You've got to look at the bigger picture here, friends. Don't, um, 
Don't get hung up on one little pearl or one little pea. There we go. And it just calms you down. When you do this, it will calm you down. And I'm, I know it'll be lovely when it's done because I've done it once already. And the whole time I was doing this one, I was thinking, my head was going, it's not going to work, it's not going to work, it's not going to work, it's not going to work. It's, oh, it's worked. But so that's why I, I know. The way the mind works, it's like um, you just got to chill and just go for it. Um, and like Paul always says, what's the worst? What's the worst that can happen? Well, it's a bit of card or paper. Did you waste the time? No. Because all the time you were concentrating on this, you weren't worrying about stuff that you can't control anyway. This is cheap therapy, friends. <laughs> it really is. See, it's starting to come together now. Just gently does it. So I asked you, have you got a Sharpie pen? Have you got a big black Sharpie pen? Yeah? Well, let's have a look, just to see. See, this one's got black all around the outside. Right, well, let's do this then. If you take the Sharpie pen, just do that. There you go. And I'm on the, so you just dig in, see? And then it covers up the back, the, the back. And you'll see when you do this, just put a bit of copy paper underneath. But when you do this, it's what we do with all our cards, isn't it? But straight away, right, <laughs> it looks better, already looks a million times better. As soon as you put an edge around it, it's improved it, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. Now, of course, I need to just not confuse you. It's all right, I don't waste that paper. But I know that it right, there you go. Carries on undeterred. Right, what have I got here? Thin one. Thinnest one. Oh five. Yeah, so these pens are well worth investing in. If you haven't got them. And you want to join in the shack every week. There you go. Yeah, so we're talking about getting together every Thursday at 10 o'clock, as we have done for nearly two years now. And what, I've, what I've kind of been watching out for and listening to is that many of you, uh, you hit a, you've seem to have hit a kind of a creative wall. It's like a block. And, and people, I've seen it so many times, people say, oh, I've, I've lost my mojo. I've lost my arty mojo. I don't know where to begin. I don't know. And I get that. I, I so do. And, and I've actually, this week, I've been blogging about different ways to get back into this art. And I understand where, where the block is coming from. The, 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 it's like a writer's block. It's like an art block, isn't it? And this, this losing your arty mojo, losing your creative appetite, I think... Do you know it's all fear based? It's all fear based, and it's not. It's not even to do with your art. It's to do with everything going around, going on around us. It's it. It, it kind of paralyzes you because you. This is how it works for me. I'm so worn out worrying about stuff I can't do anything about that I. I haven't got any energy left to even come up with any arty stuff. And somewhere there's a little monkey on my shoulder saying, well, what's the point? You know, there's every point. There's every point. 
And it is the it's the art for me. It's like with the pottery. It's the wheel. It's the hand building. It's the it's the feel of the clay. Um, it's this kind of thing. It's it's just concentrating on little bite sized pieces um, of art in any shape, in any form, be it paper, be it quilting, be it knitting. Doesn't matter. Just get out of your head and get with your hands. And it's what I've been blogging about all week different ways to get break through this this block that so many of us are experiencing at the moment um, I think simple this simple little exercise what we're doing here look it's already starting to done that look better now hey are we happier with it now yeah um, this simple little exercise it will really it's it's like it's an unblocker okay don't matter what it looks like in the end if it's nice bonus makes you feel better but if you don't like it make another one because all the time you're doing this you're not you're not feeding the fear in your subconscious about other things Honestly, I'm no, I'm no psychologist, but I, I do know that this, this here gets rid of my headaches. It gets rid of my tearfulness. It, it works every time. It's, it's worked for me for years. Just something this simple. That's going to be a lovely shadow, that one. There you go. So yeah, the blog, um, barbaragrayblog.com. I, I, I'm going to start blogging every day again. We, I did for many years. And then last year, I, again, I lost my way. And then technically it started getting a bit more challenging. And ugh, and that was it. And then I, I kind of, I stopped blogging every day, you know. And I just thought, well, actually, I really enjoy it. So I'm going to just crack on. See, now they're all coloured in. Yeah, so check out the blog. Check out the blog. It might, it might also help you. But I think, I feel like I want to put some more dots in over here. What do you think? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring this over here like that. And I'm going to make this a little bit more. Now I've made it too small. All right, I'm going to make a little dinky one now. Just breaks down that great big area. Hmm. Don't sweat the small stuff, Gray. Oh, it's quite a nice little one. I might do another one over here like that. Balance, balance, balance. Well, now... Let's do some, um, the next thing to do is the little, these ones. I'm trying to decide if I do, right, this one here. Okay, here we go. And again, it's just a question of taking your time. I'm using the fine one, aren't I? 005. It's not a race. That looks quite good. Hey, it's nice, isn't it? Where else? Where else do I think? I think along here is quite good. I quite like. I think this one's going to look nice. It can't really go wrong the only the only logical thing that i will say right is we've got stripes we've got white and we've got black so if you've got a black piece here right you can't put black there that's either going to be white or it's going to be a stripe 
or it can be both. And if it's going to be both, then you're going to take your thin pen again and you're going to have to make, see, see that, that big stripe there, that big hole there. So, for example, one's got to be white and one's got to be striped. It can't be black. So if I come down like that and up like that and back down again, I've cancelled out that great big area. But now what I want to do, let's say, is I'm going to put my stripes here. See? Does that make sense? So I create my own track. I just create my own track. And there. See? They're quite good. So what you're going to do now is you're going to look at where you are, what areas that's going to be, a, that one there is definitely a track. And you're going to split it up. How do you feel about doing this before we get together next week? Hey, do you fancy? Do you fancy or do you want to just leave it like this and then say, right, let's carry on where we left off and just literally put it in a cupboard, the one that we're working on? What would you rather do? Or would you rather finish this? See, I feel like we need to put some dots in here, don't you? <laughs> Mind you, that make a lovely black panel there. That might make a nice black panel here. But then there's too much black going on, isn't there? There and there. Mm, thinking, thinking. Easy. So now, I reckon I could put another pearl in there. I reckon this is going to look so nice now because it's tucked in underneath, you see, but it's got a little white divider. So it is a thinking game. Just got to make sure. See, I think this is going to look beautiful in black. So I'm going to, let me just finish on this so you see. But this time, because I'm going in for the big black, I probably, you're going to use my, my, my thinner one number one around the outside just to get it right right tight like this okay yeah so paul's on television at 11 o'clock and three o'clock today he's there to keep you company do go and have a look at those lovely dies they're half price which is quite exceptional value and then um and then I'm on. Actually, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come up there like that and make this a bit bigger. There you go. So you make your own, create your own path. That's very philosophical, Gray. There. Then I'll use the fatter one, the eight, to, to fill. Um, yeah, so Paul's on 11 and 3, and then I'm on, on Sunday, 2 to 4. And then Linda's back next week on Tuesday, with Groovy Tuesday, and that's what we're doing. We're here to keep you company through the new year again. I'm not going anywhere. And I hope that you're not. Together we're better. There, see? So now, you see how you start to build it up and you're just concentrating on little areas. See, I think that's going to look really... So now I need the thinner one. Yeah. And I think this is going to look really nice in black here. And I'm going to leave that bit there white. And then I'm going to fill this in. So it's just a question of the contrasts. What you've got is tracks, pearls, black and white. And that's a simple doodle really, isn't it? That's it. So my suggestion is 
that we we get it to um, colour in the pearls, colour in the tracks and fill in the blacks. Don't worry about the shade. The shade we'll do together next week. And then next week, we'll start on another one. How's that sound? Yeah? So do the colouring in, do the tracks, do the black, do the white. Get your basic down. And then next week, we'll get the grey pencils out and we'll put the shade in to give it that optical illusion, right? I might, I may just do another one just to see, um, to get more, I might get a bit more of a ribbon flow going, maybe. I like this too. This is the hair one. I might try a ribbon one. But whatever it is you do, do something, make something. And when that anxiety, when that starts, do me a favour and just, just get a pen and a piece of paper. And just do something this simple. Make a little tile, okay? It'll make a beautiful piece of artwork eventually. Anyway, Jilly, thank you very much. Paul's on the telly already, so I, I will love you and leave you. Thank you uh, for keeping me company and enjoy the first week of the year and uh, travel gently, friends. And I shall see you next week. Lots of love. Bye-bye now. I need to put my other glasses on so I can see the screen. There you go. Go easy, friends. Bye-bye now. Bye.